So this is before I had to send Teddy downstairs because he is whining too much. So we're gonna go get um, your Nana to look after you, okay? Because you're making too much noise for the video. But I thought I'd bring him on here to say hi and look how big he's getting. Look how big he's getting. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll be back. Oh, no. Today's video is going to be five of my tips on how you can have a better relationship with food and exercise. Now, it's not something I've always had the best relationship with. I went through stages of being too restrictive with my diet and then wanting to exercise almost every day because I believe that's what I needed to do to feel good and healthy in my body. But I'm here to share five ways you can let that go and still maintain a healthy figure and feel good about yourself as much as possible. It's still like a journey that's ongoing for me. I'm never gonna be right exactly where I want to be. Hopefully one day I'll be in a position where I can say I really truly love my body. It's not there yet. I don't think for many women it will be in that, at that stage. I thought maybe it would help a few of you that are less um, advanced in your path than I am. I'm not trying to make out that I'm like some sort of fitness or food guru because I'm definitely not. I'm still like learning things as I go along but I thought it was quite interesting to share my journey with you. So yeah, I've got five things I want to mention that I've written down so I don't forget anything. And I kind of think they're a bit different than the traditional um, diet and fitness tips you probably hear everywhere else, but I actually really believe passionately that it's not all about counting macros, calorie counting, and I really feel like that um, just scratches, scratches the surface of what the inner problem is that you actually want to um, focus on and that will heal your body and heal your attitude towards food and exercise um, to begin with. So I'm gonna get into it. The first point I want to make is that you need to visualize and feel into the best version of you that you want to be. Now you obviously, you probably have the idea, what I always do, of like the kind of body shape, the toneness, the um, muscular definition and the kind of figure that you want. So my tip would be to imagine yourself as if you had that already while still like being grateful for the body you have but if you can manage to try and embody that person how would she act, how would she hold herself, how would she walk, how would the person that you want to become, how they eat, how they exercise, how they talk to themselves in their heads because if you were your kind of ideal for example nine stone figure and you um, had a healthy relationship with food and exercise, would you probably go to the gym a few times a week? Maybe. Would you eat fairly well and not binge on random foods? Would you overstuff yourself because you feel like you're restricted on foods? Probably not. Um, so having that in consideration when you're thinking about what you're going to eat, what, how you're going to exercise, and if you try and maybe at the beginning of the day do this kind of visualization just imagine yourself going throughout the day making making the decisions that are in alignment with the you that you want to become and you will find if you start off the day thinking like positive thoughts about yourself and feeling as if you already have the body that you want then you will make decisions from that position in your mind and you will actually choose better foods for you and choose better types of movement that will actually will benefit you um, towards that goal. It's not going to be instant but it's definitely a stepping stone and the first sign of achieving your goals is an approved feeling. It's all about the energy you put behind things. If there is negative energy going towards the goal, if you're like pushing yourself at the gym, if you're doing it for the wrong reasons and not doing it from a loving place to begin with then you're never going to get where you want to get and it's just the way it is. So um, I learned that the hard way so take it from me and just believe that you, the version of you that you want to become does exist somewhere. <laughs> it is gonna, it can happen if you want it to happen enough. And if you focus your attention on where you want to be rather than where you are, I think that's the key. So yeah, really visualize, really try and feel the feelings of the emotions. Don't just kind of think, um, not just aesthetically like this is what I'm gonna look like in this bikini, but try and imagine how you're gonna feel, how how confident you feel, how um, happy you feel, how content you feel how maybe you imagine yourself going out for meals with friends and not having to worry about what you're going to eat or enjoying maybe an Oreo out of a packet of biscuits without having like the whole thing. That kind of thing, that's what I'm talking about, I think is um, really, really effective. So tip number two is to have your favorite foods um, so you don't feel deprived. Now by favorite foods, I don't mean just have stock up your kitchen with junk food because if you're at the stage where you just can't control yourself around food, then it's not a good idea to do that because you're self-sabotaging really. 
and I'm not going to say you can instantly switch around that behaviour and just like have all your absolute favourite things like for me Biscoff lotus spread is the one thing I really can't have in the house because I would just probably eat the whole jar and I'm not saying that's a bad thing but I've done it before in like a course of a day and I've just felt like really horrible after it and like I kind of think why did I do that because it just feels like if your body just doesn't want it at all. I would definitely say maybe have a list of foods that you really enjoy quick and easy meals that you can make um, on short notice and if you're out all day and need to come back in the evening and cook something quickly then have maybe on your notes on your phone some quick go-to like healthy meals that will make um, your life easier so you don't have to think about it and stress about what you're going to eat um, because I've tried like following recipe books and all these um, bloggers that are bringing out like fitness books and things and to be honest it just stressed me out more than anything because I found it too overwhelming and I thought oh if I don't eat like those foods and like have 20 ingredients in my meal then I'm not going to be healthy. That's not true because you can make healthy meals in like 10 minutes or less. I do it all the time and they're really tasty. Um, maybe my family wouldn't like exactly the same foods as I like but I eat what I enjoy and that's what keeps me healthy I think so definitely have a list on your phone of favourite foods and even drinks uh, that you can go to. Pinterest have some really good ideas, Instagram do but again don't get overwhelmed just pick and choose what feels good to you or don't even look at anyone else's ideas of what's good and just go with what you feel is good inside. The third tip I want to mention is that you should feel into your decisions when it comes to food and exercise so this might sound a bit crazy. I kind of ask what my gut feeling is when I'm choosing what food to have maybe I've got a selection of things I can eat. I mentally almost ask myself like what do I feel like eating? I know people do that sometimes but I really try and almost listen to see what my body's saying oh today porridge would be good for you or today you'd really like a smoothie or you probably don't need chocolate after dinner like you normally would want to. I don't always listen to that voice I'm not saying that I'm like an angel and I'm like okay my body doesn't want chocolate so I'm not gonna have chocolate today often I'm just like no and that's what I want so I'm gonna have it but I kind of just remain self-aware and I think mm, that's interesting like Am I, do I just mentally want this food or am I just like, do I physically require it? It's more of like a ongoing conversation in my head. I know it sounds a bit crazy, but I get this a lot of coffee actually. Um, I love the idea of coffee, I love the feel of coffee and holding a hot drink, but often it doesn't actually make me feel as good as I imagine it will be in my head. So I will say to myself like, yes, it's 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Do I really want a coffee right now or am I just imagining it'll be good because it's those kind of things, those situations that you have to really check in with yourself and see what your gut is telling you to do, or your heart, or your head, whichever kind of part of your body you want to connect to. Um, yeah, so that'd be my tip for that one. The fourth tip is to unfollow accounts that don't make you feel good, that provide more jealousy than inspiration, because I know a lot of people say, oh, I follow loads of Fitspo accounts because it's motivating, but when you really think when you really hear them talk about these accounts they say oh, I feel really shit about my body because they look so much better than me I'm never going to be like her and if it doesn't really motivate you in the right way if you don't actually believe you can get to that fitness level when you're not um, stressed out about it then fair enough but there's not really anyone that I know even myself there are accounts there's a couple of accounts that I follow and I think sometimes I follow them and unfollow them depending on how I'm feeling about things and sometimes I think oh yeah it's a good motivator because it gives me some ideas of like diet and exercise and things like that then other times I feel like it's a more reminder of where I'm not and where I want to be and it can be more detrimental um, than doing good so yeah I would just if you're following a lot maybe just narrow it down to a couple or one or two that just um, that like have a healthy relationship with food and exercise. With these food accounts you never really know the person's health because often they won't even have a picture of themselves so you don't even know what kind of body shape they are, what fitness level they have, if they're actually healthy or if it's just all for show, if they even eat the food they post on these Instagram accounts. Really be aware when you're following the accounts who you're following, if you know much about them and what their story is because you want to make sure you are monitoring what you're feeding your brain and what you're telling yourself because at the end of the day it's all the stories you're having in your head that create your actions and 
your attitudes and beliefs around food which can be changed because a belief is only a thought that you keep thinking. Now I could go on for ages about this but the last one I want to mention is um, exercising with your cycle. Now I'm not talking about cycling as in bikes, <laughs> I'm talking about your monthly cycle. This is something I've been learning about recently actually and it was in a book called The Woman Code that I read and I've discussed it with a few people as well and apparently there are different stages of your cycle um, which are like in seasons. Now hear me out <laughs> and I will talk about it in another video if you would like me to but there are various stages of your 28 day um, cycle between your period and like ovulation etc and it goes through like spring, summer, autumn, winter they call it and it's all in accordance with the moon as well without going too kind of out there and depending on where you are in the month you obviously as women I think certain times of the month we feel more energetic, we feel more energised other times I personally just feel like lying in bed all day and not doing anything and that's actually down to where you are in your cycle which I found really interesting and it's just important to be aware of this because I think more people should know about it because often people have a strict routine with exercise in the case say I'm going to do like hit two three times a week and then weights on two other days and yoga on one day but according to this you should actually be monitoring what type of exercise you do depending on where you are in your cycle so for example, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, but I think in autumn they recommend you doing things like gentle exercises, like long walks, yoga, nothing too strenuous. And then when you're in your summer, which is like the opposite, um, you're in like your more confident stage, you want to be out and about, you want to be seeing people, you want to be more social. So you should be doing things like, and you can do your HIIT workouts, your sprints, and you'll have more energy to do those and you'll perform better in those exercises. So. I think it's really interesting and it's something I'm kind of trying to incorporate into my workout routines and for example at the moment I'm just finishing my summer <laughs> and yeah I did like a run today at the gym but tomorrow I'll be in autumn so I'm gonna kind of see I'm gonna obviously listen to my body and see how I feel but I'm thinking I might do something a bit more like Pilates a bit more like gentle they say weights I think in autumn would be quite good it's nothing too like go 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 like something more like oh, yes. that is all I wanted to say here I think those tips will definitely help you they help me massively so I hope they are useful to you and yes I will see you next time for another video I am trying to film more I'm just trying to like do it with Teddy around because he's just so like in your face all the time and I have to be watching him 24 7 so he's a handful but a lovely handful um, his cage is back here in my room, so he's still sleeping in my room. Hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you soon.